What's up guys, how's it going, PJ here, and I have not done one of these in a very long time. Uh, probably a couple of years, uh, you guys probably know one of the main reasons, because, uh, you know, Raw hasn't been all that great in past, uh, well, this year's been pretty decent, I'm not gonna lie, last year was okay, uh, I just simply got tired of doing reviews, and they weren't, you know, there were times, uh, where I would sit down to do reviews and reviews were pretty crappy because I didn't know what to talk about you know um, so now here we are uh, right after SummerSlam we just came off from three great nights three epic nights uh, Saturday night was NXT Sunday night was SummerSlam and I thought I was through with that uh, next thing you know Monday Night Raw came in um, probably one of the best Raw's in a uh, long time the last Big uh, Raw was um, because of the Undertaker Brock Lesnar segment. I'm not talking about the uh, uh, the week of SummerSlam. I'm talking about uh, about a month ago where uh, Brock Lesnar and um, Undertaker had a brawl. Anyways, we're gonna talk about this Raw. Uh, what was so great about this Raw? Uh, well, we knew that this Raw was gonna be good simply because Dave Meltzer broke out the uh, news. I think that was one one reason. Um, and some of the other uh, websites pretty much said that uh, Sting was going to be on Monday Night Raw. There was a speculation and uh, perhaps there were other few things that the creative team were fixing to throw out and set it up uh, for future. Uh, we didn't know exactly what it was, but uh, the main thing was the Sting. And uh, there were other, quite a lot of sur surprises, you know, that we came across. Um... Uh, I just want to kick things off with uh, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman first, simply because um, th that was the first thing that happened. Lesnar came out, huge pop, amazing crowd. Um, in my opinion, if there's not a good crowd, the segment's not good. Um, if the reaction is good, the crowd is good, uh, wrestling matches are decent, Every everything adds up together you get that rating of that match that's how the rating system works in my opinion um, and same goes for the show itself uh, Lesnar came out and uh, Paul Hammond cut his amazing promo simply saying that okay we all know what happened last night we're not dumb um, Lesnar ended up pretty much uh, making Undertaker tap out but legitimately Undertaker won the match um, they showed the replay and everything, simply showing the fact that this isn't over yet. Where is The Undertaker? You know, he's not here. Here comes up Bo Dallas, gets a beating, pretty much um, sending a message to The Undertaker, just showing how furious under I mean, uh, Brock Lesnar is. Um, pretty good segment. Uh, gave, he gave five German suplexes to Bo Dallas and F5. Um, he kept leaving the ring, kept going back, simply because Paul Heyman was just, he was like, please, Brock, just one more, one more. Uh, so it was pretty cool to see that. I figured that they were going to do another match between Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker, or should I say set it up last night, uh, for either Survivor Series or WrestleMania. Uh, the reason why I had thought about Survivor Series is because, one reason, I'm going to be there. It's going to be taking place in Atlanta. And the second reason is because that's when he made his debut at. So what an ideal way to go out, you know, at a place where you made your ultimate debut. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have dropped the name of that pay-per-view several times. Be like, hey, Undertaker's 20th anniversary or, you know, it's been such a long time since, or, you know, so-and-so since uh, The Undertaker made his presence known uh, first time as Survivor Series, if you guys know what I'm trying to say. But anyways, I guess we're going to have to wait to see what's going to happen in the future. And when that was over, we saw Lucha Dragons face off against uh, the New Day, who are the new tag team champions. And uh, primetime players were just right outside the ring, doing the casual commentary. And they never even interrupted the match. Now, you know when the match was over, obviously when New Day won. And they were simply dancing in the ring, celebrating... By the way, not to mention that um, 
uh, I love the work of um, Xavier Woods on that little trumpet. You know, I thought that was a pretty cool thing that he did. I wonder if he's going to keep doing it. But anyways, New Day started to celebrate in the ring by dancing. And I thought that, you know, they were going to use some pyrotechnics for them. Uh, because, you know, the f fireworks started going crazy on the stage. And uh, it took me maybe about three seconds to realize what was going on because the pyro was really loud. And right in the beginning of their intro, I'm talking about Dudley Boys, uh, you really can't hear what's going on. Um, pyro stopped. Next thing you know, the Dudley Boys, Dudleyville popped up on the screen. And I was like, oh my gosh. My eyes filled up with water. And I almost started to cry. Yeah, I was pretty much crying because, you know, I was a... When I was a kid, I watched them um, on SmackDown, on the pay-per-views, Raw, uh, back in the Attitude Era, you know, in the Ruthless Aggression Era, pre-early Ruthless Aggression Era. Um, and I was just simply, you know, I was going crazy. I told my girlfriend, I was like, man, I used to watch these guys back in the day. This is a big deal. And she was like... Oh, is that the girl, Lita, who used to be with, you know, those two guys? I'm like, no, get the freak out, kid. Those are Hardy Boys. <laughs> and uh, I told her, I was like, you know, either ways it would be cool to see Hardy Boys back too, you know. But anyways, this is about Dudley Boys. They came out and they did everything, whatever fans asked for, you know. Um, to the was to freaking Dudley death drop or whatever you want to call it the 3d on the table it was just amazing they even queued to the people they were like one two three they were like Devon get the tables it was freaking amazing I I was just going crazy man and you guys can probably tell right right now that I'm freaking excited just to even talk about that um, which is one reason why I wanted to do this review so bad okay when that was over, Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns faced Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper. I had a speculation that in this match, Eric Rowan was going to return, uh, simply because that there was a speculation that uh, somewhere around this time, um, either the Shield was going to reunite or either the Wyatt family, more than likely Wyatt family, Simply because Seth Rollins was in the mix uh, with, you know, his championship goal or whatever, you know, facing John Cena. So, whatever. Um, anyways, after when the match was over, actually the match never ended. Uh, or should I say it just uh, ended up as a no contest or a disqualification. Who cares? Uh, lights went off uh, during some time at the end of their match whenever it started going crazy. And I was like, yep. Eric Rowan is returning, but nope, a huge freaking monstrous guy showed up. Um, took me a little while to figure it out who the guy was, but actually it didn't. I went up on Twitter, and uh, I think Dave Meltzer uh, reported saying that that's Brown Stallman, Braun Stallman, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name because I haven't heard it uh, anyone anyone mention it yet. Um, Braun Stallman, I guess. Um, and that's his real name. Um, I don't know if it's going to be his ring name. I highly doubt it. It needs to be something else. But he showed up in the ring, and for a second I thought it was Sam Tarly from, uh, uh, from Game of Thrones. Because <laughs> that's who he looked like. Uh, also, speaking of Game of Thrones, uh, they had hired the, the uh, Mountain. Uh, I don't know who if you know who the mountain is in Game of Thrones or who or who played that specific role in the first few seasons. Um, now the mountain is some other guy. They have hired the first version of Mountain from Game Game of Thrones, and he's a freaking huge guy. Um, probably almost as close as uh, this guy, but I think the mountain from Game of Thrones is more chiseled out. And he's huge. He's literally a mountain. Anyways, I thought that this was the mountain. I was like, holy crap, is that the mountain from Game of Thrones? Because I was impressed when I saw this guy, guy named Braun. Um, but his debut was pretty impressive, even though it wasn't a match. But he showed up, and he basically decimated Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns. And next thing you know, Bray White, Luke Harper, and Braun Stallman 
I'm gonna call start calling him a monster for this week till we find out his real name next week. Um, uh, they just basically ended up posing at the end of their, you know, the thing when they were done decimating uh, half of the Shield members. <laughs> But yeah, that that's how it ended, and I was pretty impressed by that. I thought that was a pretty cool segment. Uh, next thing that happened was PCB faced off Team Bella. Bella Twins won, and right before that, freaking Miz showed up with his um, uh, with the segment that he had with a uh, PCB, which was whatever. I, I don't think people cared much about PCB because they were freaking chanting for Sasha Banks. I heard uh, some of the divas were annoyed by the fact uh, what uh, people were uh, responding or what people were chanting, uh, something along the lines. Uh, and this happened backstage after when they, you know, when they were done wrestling their match. Okay, and I think a, a commercial came on uh, advertising SmackDown, and I think this commercial came on three times during Raw, mentioning the fact. You need to go watch SmackDown this week. Actually, I'm the one telling you guys because uh, tonight, uh, you know, they record SmackDown. SmackDown taping is going to take place. Um, Dudley boys are going to be on there. Uh, I don't know if they're having a match or not, but I I'm guessing they are since they uh, signed a multi-deal contract. It's not. It hasn't been confirmed, but I've heard that they have signed a multi multi-year contract, multi-deal year, whatever you want to call it. Um, they signed it together. Uh, that's all I know. So, which is a good thing. They're going to be wrestling on WWE rather than TNA. Oops, sorry, bad word. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be wrestling. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, or whatever they're going to do on SmackDown. I just can't wait to see that. Alright, shortly after, uh, Jon Stewart came out started running his mouth. Um, I really thought that John Cena was going to come out and try to torture um, Jon Stewart just by picking him up, doing like, you know, he was going to perform a AA on him, um, but not actually do a AA. If you guys know what I'm trying to say, I think he's done it before with someone else, Paul Heyman. Um, but uh, instead, Ric Flair came out. That was a surprise. That was a nice, quick, uh, quick surprise, if you want to call it. Ric Flair came out. They, uh, you know, kind of had a little cool chit chat, and then John Cena come out and performed a AA after when he was done doing his uh, angry ritual on John Stewart and I think we got to see John Stewart's crack as well and it was pretty disgusting um okay and then after that we saw the main event uh Dolph Ziggler Cesaro Ryback and Randy Orton versus Rusev Kevin Owens Big Show and Sheamus and uh, this match was okay um the highlight was basically the ending of the match. They've done some stuff which was like, hey, you guys got to see this. Especially the fact that they picked up Big Show up in the midair after when all the heel guys left except Big Show. They picked him up. Uh, when I say they, I think Cesaro and Ryback picked up Big Show and Orton gave him a RKO. Uh, Ziggler was down, just hanging out with Lana, just being... Oh, speaking of Lana, Lana got a huge freaking pop right when she attacked, um, Summer Rae. Um, uh, if she got a huge pop, I think they're gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again till fans actually get tired of this crap. So, that was one cool thing to see, you know, whatever happened. Uh, and after when that was over, uh, the main segment... You guys ready for this? Freaking authority came out to present Seth Rollins his beautiful statue who looks like Jesus Christ holding two title belts. Um, and I just want to say this right when, from the start, actually, uh, from SummerSlam, I thought that uh, the authority was, you know, literally going to screw Seth Rollins out of the whole championship scene and just bury him. For some odd reason. Or just set up a match between Triple H and Seth Rollins. Uh, but nope. That didn't happen. Uh, the reason why I said that Seth Rollins were, was going to get screwed. Because of the Triple H's looks. I, I don't know. It's been throwing me off lately. The way he smiles. And 
it just looks pretty phony, it looks funny, it looks weird, and it looks fake to me. And on top of that, uh, right before they went out to do this segment, they uh, pretty much got rid of John Cena. So I was like, okay, John Cena is not going to be his opponent. He's not getting a rematch right now. Um, another contender I had in my mind was Kane. I was like, it could be Kane. What if he's got his mask back on and uh, he's just ready to go another round? You know, what if Kane is finally getting a title shot? And uh, I was like, man, that would be freaking lame if Kane shows up like that and just steals a spotlight. <laughs> well, I don't know about stealing a spotlight, but uh, it would be just weird, in my opinion, if Kane would have showed up at the main main segment, you know. But you just never know now these days. But, um, you know, as soon as they raised up the curtain, the cover, um, from the statue, there was no statue. It was Sting hiding underneath the statue. You can tell too. He uh, sweat off his some of the paint from uh, his forehead, s staying in that freaking cover for such a long time. Oh, and I totally forgot to mention. Uh, I love the fact how uh, Triple H and Stephanie kind of sung "Happy Birthday" to Vince McMahon. Although that was pretty cool. And uh, another fact: how Triple H wasn't really scared to just. Um, say that you know the old man back there he's probably really pissed off right now because you know they weren't following the script they were just going by heart you know you don't do that you have to follow Vince's rules I don't know how many of you guys come across some of the silly scripts or not you know you have to like say only what he has put down in the script like you can't say the word belt you have to say the WWE championship like, stuff like that, you know? Anyways, what this thing do? Sting attacked. He kicked the crap out of Seth Rollins' butt, even though there was no finisher. I was still happy to see Sting because that's something you don't get to see on a Monday Night Raw on a regular show basis. Um, I was just happy to see Sting. And um, as uh, Seth Rollins landed up on the floor, uh, Sting approached the uh, WWE World Heavyweight Championship belt. He picked it up and he pointed at Seth Rollins and he basically challenged him to a match. And that's where people started going freaking crazy. They were like, oh yeah, it's on. Sting, Sting knows what he wants and everybody knows what he wants. And that's something you cherish. You know, you cherish a moment. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, Sting and WWE in year 2015. I mean, that's the guy you used to see back in the day. I mean, he's actually in WWE at the very moment right now. And he's going to be facing someone with Seth Rollins, who has proven over and over again, I guess, if, you, if that's what you want to call it, um, that he's uh, a top guy right now. And um, he's facing, he's ready to face a legend like Icon, or a legend like Icon, uh, a legend named Sting, uh, who is an icon. So, I'm just pretty excited just to even uh, see this, you know. Um, even though I'm kind of jealous that it's taking place at Night of Champions because I'm going to be at Survivor Series. I was hoping to see that this will happen at Survivor Series. But, um, I guess we're we'll ha going to have to see this. Um, we're going to have to see this at, you know, Night of Champions. So, it's whatever. Uh, anyways, I'm done doing this review. Thank you guys for watching this amazing video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like on this video if you guys can. And I hope you really enjoyed the show, not this video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.